Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Let's Learn Dota 2. So, uh, it's been a while since I've done any of this series because, uh, honestly, I haven't been playing a lot of Dota lately, which was unfortunate, but my Dota crew started playing at a different time of day than I was usually free and so on and so forth. But here we are again with uh, some faces you might remember. Jaja Binks is actually Cam. We've also got Alpaca Patrol, Dennis, and uh, Mijimu. <clears throat> And we're all going to play some Dota 2 together, and I'm playing Leshrac this time. This is a little bit of a departure from the rest of the series, in that the rest of the heroes that I've featured in this series have been heroes that are good for, like, your first or second game of Dota, with the possible exception of Skeleton King. Um, but yeah, Leshrac is a really, really, really good support, even though, like I said, he's a little bit harder to play than some of the other heroes, so I wouldn't recommend Leshrac for your first game, but he's a good, you know, the fourth or fifth hero to kind of work on mastering uh, after you've got the basics of Dota down, and he's also a good hero that you should probably know how to play against, so if nothing else, you'll get that out of this, but anyway, I'm going to teach you guys how Leshrac works. So his first skill on the far left there, the Q, is called Split Earth, and that is an unreliable stun that is, uh, what's the delay on that? It is, uh, stun delay, 0.35 seconds. So you'll get a, for a third of a second, you won't cast the stun. You'll just be waiting for it to cast on the circle that shows up when you hit the Q button. We'll see me use that in a little bit, I'm sure. Um, it's a very good stun. It has a very low mana cost, only 100 um, so you can use that fairly often being an intelligence hero and everything, you know, not at level one, but later on. And, uh, it's a two second stun when it hits and does a substantial amount of damage also. 120 at level one, 300 at level four. So, and, uh, and it can also hit multiple heroes. Just anything in the AOE, uh, is stunned and it feels really good when you pull off like a, a four man stun. Uh, this Earthshaker is making some questionable decisions against us. That fissure he used costs a ton of mana. I think this guy actually like goes soul ring and just spams that at us, which is unusual for an Earthshaker to say the least, because he uh, he doesn't have a lot of mana for most of the game, uh, for most of the early game anyway. I'm playing with the uh, Mijimu who's playing Slark. That's one of my favorite uh, melee carries, but he has a nice move that can trap uh, trap people in a leash, so that chains up really well with uh, with stun. It's good to have any kind of uh, any kind of thing to either stun or stop the enemies from moving in combination with Leshrac. He's really good in lane with somebody like a Skeleton King maybe or a Slark who can just keep the enemies locked down more reliably than he can. And then he comes in with his stun and keeps them for an additional two seconds if you chain it up right. So that is uh, one of the strengths of Leshrac, but he doesn't need it necessarily. Uh, there are some tricks to landing splitters that I'm, I'll talk about later. But... Uh, his second skill, which I should be leveling up in just a second here, is Diabolic Edict, which is uh, really good. It's a weird AoE move. It makes a bunch of little like light circles, basically, around your character, and uh, they will home in on enemy targets. And if there's only one target around, then they'll all guaranteed go to that target, but otherwise they'll kind of randomly assort themselves. So it's one of those things that you don't really want to use it around creeps if you can help it, but uh, it's all right to use it around creeps. But if you get all of them on one target, like if somebody's chasing you through the jungle or something, you can do a ton of damage, and they also affect towers. At level 4, this move can take over half of a tower's health all by itself in over the course of a few seconds. So he's a, it makes Leshrac a very, very strong pusher. And uh, we are experiencing some real technical difficulties here for Mijimu, unfortunately, in the form of that disruptor spamming his bullshit on him. But both of these guys are blowing a lot of mana. They're using clarities. They're trying as hard as they can to keep Mijimu harassed while they can while he's under level 6. Because once uh, Slark hits level 6, he gets insane health regen as part of his ulti. So you can't really harass him after that point. But for right now, they're doing what they can to stop him from getting farm. But he's still doing fine regardless. This lane is going okay, I would say. Uh, you know, not great. But, okay, and we're, uh, at this point we're discussing, okay, we could probably kill one of these motherfuckers. We're against two squishy-ish supports. Earthshaker, not so squishy, but still, you know, not the tankiest hero of all time either. And Disruptor, of course, an intelligence support. So, like myself, very tanky. That's something I should mention, though, is that Leshrac actually has, I believe, the lowest starting health in the game. So you have to be very careful with Leshrac. He could, he's very easy to die with, but he also does a ton of damage. 
as you can see there, I landed my stun a little bit after. I'm going to pop the Edict. There's a creep wave here that's making it less effective, but I can still chase down this Earthshaker, no problem. And even try to get some damage in on that Disruptor, but he's going to get away just fine. But uh, there's First Blood for us. Really strong. If you have a stun in your lane with Leshrac, like a reliable stun, or uh, like I said, anything that stops the hero from moving, Leshrac's a really strong First Blood candidate because between the two of you, you can keep somebody locked down and kill the shit out of them very easily. Shaker's just gonna keep on spamming those fissures at us to push the lane back. I, like, last hitting with the fissures. And <laughs> shit, it's really silly. Uh, one of the silliest Earth Shaker strategies I've ever seen. Because what you want to do with those is, like, trap people and put them in a situation where they can't get away. He's not really doing that. I threw out, like, a defensive stun almost there in case they came on me, but they didn't. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Uh, but no, in case they kept on chasing me to try to follow up that stun, they would have walked right into my split earth and then we could have turned it around. And uh, like I said, it doesn't, you know, it, it right now it's at 125 mana. You know, it's not the cheapest spell in the world. You can't spam it. But it's not something you should be afraid to use. It doesn't use a ton of mana, and Leshrac has a high int gain, so he ends up with enough mana to use it fairly consistently. As far as item build on Leshrac, right now I'm... Uh, I'm relying mostly on the Keeper of the Light to do the support duties like buying wards and couriers and stuff because Keeper of the Light is a strong farmer and a hard support who doesn't need any items. So it's really nice having him on the team just because your second position support, which is me, or fourth position, I guess is the technical industry term, uh, fourth position support can uh, can focus more on his items, and especially Leshrac makes a good fourth position support. I'm going to use my Split Earth to pick up that kill by accident stealing it from Mijibu, and then I'm going to pop Edict and just keep on going on this motherfucker because uh, I think we can get him. And he walks around the trees, he gets out of vision, but I still stun him with, uh, with a nicely planned Split Earth because I expected him to go that way. And I accidentally pick up a double kill, but that's okay. I'd use my magic stick in there to heal up a little bit. But that's the power of Leshrac, you know, especially in these early levels, levels, you know, 1 through 10, I would say. He's, his damage is absurd. Between the Edict and his, uh, his Split Earths, if you can Split Earth somebody away from creeps like we did there and then Edict them, they're going to be taking an insane amount of damage. And it's, uh, it's very common to get into a situation like that where a carry is trying to chase you down, like a melee carry. I'm sending the courier to the secret shop right now uh, to pick up something. I wonder what I got. I uh, honestly forget. Oh, probably my energy booster for my mana boots. And then I'm just going to wait for the courier to get here and my health to come back. And meanwhile, I'm going to be picking up a teleport scroll. Yep, there's my arcane boots. And uh, again, as far as item build, I'm going straight into a magic wand and then arcane boots. Well, other way around, I guess. Uh, and then I'm going to be rushing a bloodstone because I've had a, a good early game. We've got a Spirit Breaker charging us. I don't think we know yet. Um, that's going to be scary. And, uh, and Earthshaker is kind of setting up for this gank as well. Oh, man. This is a well-orchestrated gank. But, oh, get the stun off. Ah, man. I got perma stuns so like, before my, uh, my splitters could even go off. But Dennis comes in and uh, at least repels them, stops them from taking the tower, which is all right. But very well-orchestrated gank by that Spirit Breaker. Oh, what is he doing, though? Ah, he has a Quelling Blade. Unfortunately. Otherwise, Dennis probably would have been able to kill him there. <clears throat> Quelling Blade being an item that can destroy trees as well as give you more damage against creeps. But anyway, I'm walking back to lane because I just used all of my money on that teleport. And I'm kind of looking at what's going on mid. Calling out to Rob that I'm pretty sure he's being charged by Spirit Breaker. But, uh... By the way, that little symbol over somebody's head that shows they're being charged does not show up to the enemy team. So we, uh, well, the friendly team in this case, the the enemy of Spirit Breaker. So we have no idea when we're being charged. That's just so that the enemy knows to line up a gank. Not for you. So we've been set back a little bit in this lane, but that's okay. I already got my mana boots super early, which is really unusual on a support, and I should really be using them to uh, mana Mijibu, but I'm terrible about that. I don't usually buy arcanes, so I'm bad at remembering to uh to mana my carries up because i am a terrible terrible player but we are going to go back to farming here and i guess in this downtime i will talk about some of leshrag's other skills so his third skill there is a lightning bolt ability it's good it's very good for pushing but it's not nearly as good as his other two abilities so you want to definitely 
not level that at all, and nor is ulti until you have max split earth and edict, because both of those are such strong early game abilities <clears throat> for pushing towers and killing heroes. So we're gonna max those out first, but afterwards we'll get uh, we'll get lightning bolt up, and eventually when that's level four, in the distant future, I'm gonna kill that guy with a splitter. It's hard not to steal kills as a Leshrac sometimes because of his. Uh... Oh, please tell me I man of these two men. Oh god, I'm the worst. <laughs> Watching this back is so much different than playing it. Um. But yeah, eventually that becomes a good skill for pushing creeps. You can, like, split earth a wave of creeps and then lightning bolt them, and then they'll all die uh, just from that, so you don't have to worry about it. We're actually deciding to push down this lane, so I'm going to pop a split earth and then steal some last hits like a big motherfucker, basically. <laughs> I'm watching this game back and playing like an asshole, but, you know, I'm Leshrac, who cares? Fuck it. Gotta get my bloodstone up, which actually is really important. And uh, my ulti here is... Uh, is an ability that makes it so that you deal damage over time to everything around you. Just just all of the things. It's just AoE damage centered on yourself. I'm being charged and I'm gonna die for sure. <laughs> oh, do I know? Do, no. <laughs> yep, I am definitely dead. The ballsy Spirit Breaker, but I get the stun off on the Spirit Breaker first! And he is dead to Dennis's ulti and this Earthshaker is fucked as well. I hope. Oh, it was so close. Oh, I remember this now. I was watching this fight. And the greatest TP of all time from Dennis. Dennis was like feet away, but teleported out in front of the Earthshaker to cut him off and kill him. Really good kill there. Um, oh, no, but then Dennis gets ganked. Oh, no. Slark, get out of there. This is exciting. I played this game like two days ago, so I don't really remember what happened that well. I just remember that I saved the replay because I thought this would be good for the series. And, you know, I trust my previous self. So I've got my magic wand up, I've got my arcane boots, we're going to start rushing a bloodstone. Because that ulti I just talked about takes a ton of mana. It's a toggleable ability and it just drains your mana every second that you use it. So if you have a bloodstone, which gives you a bunch of mana regen, then you can use it a lot. That was, again, kind of a defensive stun. You know, if, uh, if Skyrath had decided to come in and try to get a cheeky last hit, he would have been hit by that. I'm getting charged again. The Spirit Breaker is a big problem for me, but... The nice thing is Leshrag is actually not the best hero to try to solo, especially in a situation like this where there aren't that many creeps. If I run away, because I'm going to immediately stun this motherfucker, turn on my edict, and then he's going to try to chase me, and he's going to think better of it. Because Leshrag actually has a ton of damage, so even though I got charged, totally caught out by myself, still got out of it with... Uh, you know, between just those two skills that I was saying were so good in the early game. They're really, really, really handy. I think in a second, though, I'm going to do something silly because I didn't realize the way or, or, uh, Spirit Breaker's ulti works has changed. You now, if you lose vision while you're, uh, while you're Spirit breaking, Breaker ulting, then it doesn't work. I thought I heard it go off, but it, it only made the sound. It didn't actually happen. He still has his ulti, and I'm like, what the fuck? I thought this guy already used his ulti. And he's going to charge me and get the kill just barely. But uh, Dennis is coming in. And can Dennis do it? Oh, come on, Dennis. Oh, so close. Spirit Breaker actually makes it out of that. He shouldn't have, but he did. Nature's Prophet such a good hero. That's who Dennis is playing because he can teleport all over the map and just come and assist in ganks. And Dennis is really good at it. <laughs> right now I'm watching Cam fight this, uh, this life stealer. Oh, so good. Cam... Uh, Summoned in the Slark with uh, one of Keeper of the Light's abilities. I should do a Keeper of the Light episode soon. That's another one of my favorite supports in the game. Uh, but he summoned in the Slark so they could kill that life stealer. Very good gank. And now we're all going to go and push bottom while Dennis split pushes top. Nature's Prophet being one of the greatest split pushes of all time. And we have a Broodmother. That's right, I'm remembering this game now. We have the greatest pushing team of all time. I can't believe I didn't mention this earlier. Every single player on this team has a pushing ability, uh, some of them better than others. Slark is not a huge pusher, everybody else though really is a pretty fantastic pusher. I'm going to use my Edict on this tower. I was hoping we were going to bait out the the um, Fortify first. Oh Jesus, I'm going to get hurt a lot. <laughs> they lined up a gank there in the trees and they were out of vision. I'm like, Rob get the last hit with your spiders, get it, get it, get it. But it's not going to happen, unfortunately. Spiders don't do enough damage to really make that happen. But those are Broodmother Spiders, uh, which is the hero that Rob is playing. 
and uh, he can make those and push down towers really easily because the they can share um, tower aggro. Oh man, such a close leap there. And he tried to use his ulti, but again, Slark just went out of vision, so the ulti was cancelled, which is unusual to me. That's not how it used to work. <clears throat> Recently, there was a patch that changed the way a lot of heroes work, so it's been a it's been an experience relearning the game a little bit. Well, we're gonna go back bottom. We've got all of their tier one towers down already, so we're just gonna split up and push down everything again. I'm I'm coming here to defend this tower because it was actually taking a lot of creep damage. And meanwhile, my whole team is up top, Radiant's and I'm kind of counting on them to uh, to distract the heroes so that I don't get solo ganked. But even if I do, and yeah, here he comes up to get charged by Spirit Breaker. Uh, but we'll see what happens, because again, oh, nice, I'm just getting teleported. Oh, that's right, Rob actually noticed uh, that Spirit Breaker ran past him, so I got teleported up top, thanks to a uh, clever teleport by Cam. And I am all good. So I pushed out that lane a little bit. We're going to come over here. Oh, we don't have all the tier 1s. For some reason, I saw, thought I saw this one off the map, but Skyrath was just standing in front of it. Uh, but we're about to take this tower. We're going to take it very, very, very soon. Ah, the goddamn Fortify. But Slark is going man mode. I'm going to get a double stun. Solid kills. We have a lot of damage. They're, they're having a lot of trouble, actually, you know, beating us. We've got Spirit Breaker coming in. I'm not sure if that's the best idea by him. Oh, but he has the life stealer, and my stun gets cancelled at the last second, and we are fucked. Hey, <laughs> that was a really bad fight. Uh, that's a really scary combination, by the way. If you ever see life stealer and spirit breaker on the enemy team, you're in for a really rough time because um, life stealer can infest inside his teammates and then pop out for a surprise attack. And Spirit Breaker can just charge you anywhere, so you can, anywhere on the map, be two-man ganked. Just at a moment's notice. Very scary. Radiance bottom Got Sanjinyasha up already on the Slark. And I'm a little bit behind on my Bloodstone, but not too terribly behind. I think I'm going to run over here and grab a Point Booster from the Secret Shop. It's, uh, I'm not going to play your perspective, the <laughs> Courier. We'll see. I'm pretty sure that's a Point Booster for my bloodstone bloodstone uh, is made out of a soul booster and a perseverance soul booster is made out of all of those booster items the arcane boots uh, energy orb the point booster and the vitality booster and perseverance is a ring of health and a void stone so we're working on that we're you know not doing terribly on it especially we're, we're only 60 minutes into the game and i am a support so i'm not really farming ah, i'm gonna miss that last hit terrible and that one is unbelievable but we're going to continue pushing using these abilities we finally leveled our lightning bolt ability uh which is slightly more important to level than the ulti but really neither of them is great at this point in the game the ulti is like serious late game but there is a fight going on up here so we're going to come in and see if we can help. Dennis manages to TP out successfully. Slark is going crazy. I'm going to stun and... Oh, what bullshit. That <laughs> stun hit nobody somehow. Uh, I got my Edict up before I got Silence, which is really good. But uh, still a scary place to be. Oh, I want so badly to go back in, but it's a bad idea. I should have just run. I thought we could get a kill. But while we were distracting all those people... Dennis got most of that tower gone. Oh, and no bash, thank God. So Dennis makes it out. That's the power of a nature's prophet. He doesn't uh, fight in fights that much. He just teleports to a lane and pushes a tower down while a fight is going on and the enemy is distracted, which is really, really nice. And especially good for this team because we don't really have much in the way of carries. We have some carries, but they're like nothing compared to a life stealer. Uh, so our main focus here is just kill all of the towers. So I've just respawned. I'm going to come back in to the mid lane here, help Rob out. And uh, basically the name of the game here is see if we can get close enough to a tower for me to use my edict on it. And then that tower dies. That's uh, that's how Leshrac is played in this, in this type of game anyway. Very strong pushing hero. 
And it's especially good because he's not the greatest creep pusher, he's only a tower pusher. So it's really good having him team up with like a Keeper of the Light or a Broodmother. So that, you know, they can take care of the creeps and then I just take care of the tower itself. And meanwhile, still kind of working on... Oh no, our courier died. I don't know how that happened. Uh, but we're still kind of working on our uh, Bloodstone, but it's going to be a while. You know, it's... For Leshrac to get an early Bloodstone really requires him to not die much, which is unusual for Leshrac because he's so squishy. And also get a lot of kills, which happens sometimes, but not usually. Ah, fucking Earthshaker taking out all those spiders. We needed those, Earthshaker. What an asshole. Cam, <laughs> Cam puts down an Illuminate and then realizes that he's made a huge mistake and like tries to push them back into it. But it all worked out. Rob makes some spiders. And we're back to pushing. It's a little bit scary. We're, we're facing off against their team here probably more than we should be. But at the same time, Dennis is, uh, I assume, off doing stuff. I think he's bottom. And distracting their team very successfully. Here comes uh, Spirit Breaker. Which is maybe not the best. Oh man, he fucking ults out of my uh, out of my stun. Very depressing. Oh Jesus, I turned on my ulti. I do a bunch of damage with it, but I'm definitely gonna die. But I take down the uh, life stealer basically with it. Like life stealer would not have died without that ulti. So it all works out, and uh, we pick up some pretty important kills there. Life stealer dead especially is a big deal. They're chasing down the spirit breaker, and I'm like, guys, just take the tower. Just take the tower. But they're going to actually, I think, take down the Spirit Breaker. Ah, no, he has Mask of Madness. So, unfortunately, we didn't get a tower out of that. But we did get some hero kills. And we're going to go for this tower. And I think we're going to get it. So, good stuff there. And pretty much just, like, running up at towers, sacrificing ourselves to get them dead is the name of the game here. And now we're going back to mid. And just, again, keeping the pressure on. This, this is not a team that sits back and farms at all. It's a very action-oriented team. We have to take advantage of the fact that they haven't farmed that much and can't really stand up to the fact that we are pushing them so hard. So we're going to come up here. I'm going to pop my Edict probably. And, uh, yes, I am. And take down... Look how fast that tower dies to Edict. It's insane. <laughs> I, and they realize at the last second, they're like, oh, shit, that tower is actually going to go down. So they use their... Uh, they're fortified. They might get a deny off here, unfortunately. We left it within deny range. And I die incredibly quickly <laughs> to that burst damage. That's the the disadvantage of a Leshrac. Is that he dies incredibly quickly to any kind of burst damage or right clicks. They almost got our courier again. Jesus Christ. <laughs> We're just going to micro that a little bit. And, uh... Cam's just hiding, <laughs> hiding in the corner, and it looks like they're going to back off, or they might just be going back to their creep wave. That I'm checking on that tower, it's so low, but it has not been denied yet, which is unusual, but I think they probably eventually do notice that and take it down. We're losing this tower for sure. We've used our fortify, but it probably isn't going to matter. I am back alive. And I'm going to come back in to try to help. Urshay, or uh, Spirit Breaker making a big mistake here. Going to stun him, and he is super dead. Probably didn't even need Edict there, but, you know, to be safe. Took that guy down. And we actually saved our tower, which is a big deal. They, they definitely lost theirs. Is it within deny range? Our tower might be within deny range. We might be about to deny it. Am I checking on it? Nah, it's actually pretty clearly not in deny range, I think. I'm going to pop up here, grab uh, a Ring of Health, if I had to guess, but another piece of the Bloodstone. And getting, you know, decently close. We're probably about halfway to Bloodstone Double at this point. Damage. That kill on the Spirit Breaker was a really big deal for that. That's basically how Leshrac farms. He gets kills in team fights. <clears throat> but meanwhile, we have a huge tower advantage at this point. They haven't taken a single tower yet. We've got uh, two Tier 2s down. Because they did end up, I think, doing the deny. And we're going for the last tier 2 tower. So they're uh, they're running out of time. Their jungle is not as safe as it could be at this point for the life stealer to farm. And they're starting to feel their lack of early game compared to us. Oh, that's Lark. So, oh, man. But meanwhile, I get destroyed by, uh, by an infest 
from that life stealer. But that's okay. Look, again, we've taken out so much of this tower. We can afford to lose a team fight because we're if they lose their last tier two, that puts them at a huge disadvantage in map control. Not having those towers for vision and oh man, the jukes. Slark made it away. Oh, and he's gonna kill the Earthshaker. Oh my god. Oh, he, he's gonna kill it, right? Oh no. Oh no. What a disappointing engagement. Oh shit. Just leave, Slark. Just leave. Leave the keeper to die. Oh my god. Oh yeah, he got a. Uh... <laughs> that is hilarious. He actually got. Um... What is that called? Glimpsed. And I, I'm <laughs> being a little cheeky. Like, congratulating the Disruptor on his fantastic play, play there. Disruptor has a move that can teleport a unit back in time to where they used to be a few seconds ago. He used that to save Slark's life and feed the Earthshaker to him. <laughs> and, uh, and then Slark was just able to get out the other way. We're gonna kill the shit out of that Spear Breaker. No problem. Between uh, Splitter's Stuns and Edict. But landing those Splitter's Stuns, again, is very, very important for playing Leshrac properly. <clears throat> so that's why I wouldn't necessarily recommend him for um, like super super new players, but it's fun. We're going to finish up our Perseverance here, starting to gain some steam on this Bloodstone farming. I thought about picking up that Illusion Rune, but I called it out to my team, and I think somebody wanted it. I don't know. Maybe not. <clears throat> but I didn't want to pick it up anyway. Illusion Rune, nah, it doesn't really do anything with Leshrac. I could have used them to scout, maybe, but big deal. They can't cast spells, and Leshrac is all about spells, so it doesn't really matter. Pick up some last hits with our lightning ability. Get a little bit of mana from the Keeper. Did we, or did he use it on Slark? I don't know. I don't know what's going on. But I'm coming up here to just kind of push this creep wave a little bit. Split Earth, really good creep pushing ability. Pretty cheap. Does a bunch of damage to the creeps and stops him from moving. And here we go with a fight, and I am in a terrible position, and I'm going to die very quickly. But my Edict stays up. That's an important thing to note. If you use Edict and then die, wherever you were when you died, the Edicts hang out there and continue doing damage. And that's a lot of damage to add to a team fight. So, no huge deal. Brought some people's health down. But, uh, team fights are difficult for Leshrac. He dies very quickly, and he does a lot of damage, and the enemy knows that. So especially before you get your Bloodstone, you're going to be experiencing a lot of uh, people killing you first in team fights because you're an easy kill. That Life Stealer is going to go down from Skull Basher on that Slark. Slark is coming over here, gonna jump in, and they're gonna take down that. Uh, that Skyrath Mage, no problem. I'm going to respawn in a couple seconds. And right back to pushing. Nobody is sitting back to farm except for the Nature's Prophet occasionally. And that is exactly how we need to play this team. And it's working out great so far. Yeah, let's see what the Lifestealer has really quick. Uh, Lifestealer almost has AC, which is a little bit concerning. But it's not fabulous farm you know it's not it's not that great and the fact that all of his tier twos are down already you know he needs to be a little bit further ahead than that to really make this work out cam and i going to push down this wave no problem i'm going to pop my edict immediately and they're going to uh pop their fortify so we've uh you know we didn't actually get any damage done to the tower there well now we have a little bit but uh you know, my Edict is on cooldown, but their Fortify is on cooldown, and Fortify is a much longer cooldown. So still a victory to kind of make them get rid of that. Let me get rid of these creeps. And Earthshaker is going to do some crazy shit and get himself killed. As there's Oh my god, no, he's going to live! Unbelievable. Unfortunately, uh, Lifestealer is enraged at this point. But I'm going to turn on my ulti, I'm going to stun him, and ah, oh, I am going to get caught by a fissure, unfortunately. But almost made it out of there. That's a, that's a really important tactic to learn as Leshrac, is if you're being chased down by a melee hero, just turn around, use your split earth on them, like right where they're going to be when they start attacking you. And they're not going to want to give up that attack. They're just going to be like, oh, this idiot stopped moving, and then they're going to get split earthed, and then you can probably get away. Or maybe turn it around on them, depending on how fed they are. Because a lot of the time, if you stun them, they're going to lose a lot of health. You can turn on Edict and then turn the chase around and kill them. 
Uh, Leshrac can be a surprisingly aggressive hero, and that's one of his huge benefits in my mind, is that he can really come out of nowhere. Like, somebody can just be running at you like a, you know, lifestealer or something and be like, okay, I've got this kill, this is no problem, and then Leshrac can just turn it around on them if they walk into a stun. Early game, not late game. Not if the lifestealer is any farm whatsoever. Rob, I think, is considering Roche. Or, like, telling us to consider Roche, because I don't think Broodmother can solo it. But, are we going to do it? We might be doing it. And meanwhile, I am still one piece away from my Bloodstone. I need a Vitality Booster, which is 1,100 gold. Edict also works on Roche, by the way. Fun fact. So, he's going to be taking a bunch of damage from that. And, uh, so does Split Earth. So, we'll take Roche down. Hurt him a lot. Keep attacking, and he's gonna go down pretty easily. And then Mijibu is gonna grab the Aegis on that Slark. And back to pushing, basically. So, with that extra life on Slark, we can. We're uh, more likely to be able to push in successfully. <clears throat> because, uh, you know, Slark can go back to life once. We really, at this point, after taking all the external towers, they can fight us on high ground for a long time and turtle a bit. So we need to be aggressive in finding a way to win a team fight on their high ground and push down a tower regardless, or a Rex. And that is what we're working on. We're actually, for the first time in the game, though, backing up a little bit, waiting for a tactical engagement. And uh, I get a chance to farm a little bit and try to get my bloodstone up as soon as possible. But Rob's also going to be taking uh, taking creep camps. Anyway, it's hard to say which of us needs to farm more. So I'm just kind of sharing. But I'm four, uh, 500 gold away from my bloodstone now. And just really hoping that before something breaks out and I die again, I can get that bot. That's always a big struggle with Leshrag, is actually not dying for long enough to afford pieces of the Bloodstone. I've had a lot of games where I never quite get the Bloodstone, because I just die when I'm right next to being able to afford it over and over again. There's that Illusion Rune again. Probably a new Illusion Rune. I'm just going to walk right past it. I don't give a fuck. I don't know, just assuming my team might be able to use it, I guess. Illusion rune, probably the worst rune in the entire game. Not very handy. And am I actually going to go and farm a creep camp instead of helping my team here? I think I noticed at this point. Yeah, things are going on down here. That was silly. But then again, Leshrac is actually a pretty quick jungler when he has the opportunity. Oh, here we go. Fight time. That raged lifestealer is immune. And I am silenced anyway, and I know it, so I am just going to run. I can't do anything until that silence wears off, which it has. Here's the uh, Spirit Breaker. I'm going to stun him, and we're actually going to kill the shit out of him. <laughs> Me and Slark, man, really good combo, because Slark can hold them down for my Edict to kill them. And also set up Split Earths for me. I'm done with my Bloodstone. I'm just like, guys, I'm not going to run in and die again. I'm sorry. I need to buy this Bloodstone because all future engagements are going to be so much better when I pick it up. So we're going to disassemble the uh, Arcane Boots to get the Energy Booster back out of them and pick up the Energy Booster to assemble into a Bloodstone. And the next thing we're going to be buying is Phase Boots so we can chase people down with our ulti up. But regardless, they're going to be able to take down the tower without me. And I'm going to run back in with my new Bloodstone. And if we uh, if we end up in a situation where we're fighting again, we can turn on our ulti and leave it on for a very long time. And it does a whole bunch of damage. So having that extra mana is a really big deal. And I can also just uh, completely spam my abilities. I can use Split Earth every time it's off cooldown, Edict, etc. I'm never going to run out of mana again, basically, unless I use my ulti a lot. <clears throat> so we are at this point and this is also the problem with Leshrac the moment I get enough money to buy my bloodstone is the moment the game is over I tried to uh, I tried to split earth those creeps but they felt they had to walk around because of all the spiders so they got out of it that's okay we're gonna use another edict to take down this and with two racks down that is pretty much the end of any dota game it's very unusual for a team to come back uh, with two racks down, I'm just gonna kill this And see if I can help out with this fight at all. 
I'm gonna take down the Earthshaker, turn on my ulti, but I'm stunned. I'm perma-stunned by this fucking Spirit Breaker, get away from me. But turn on the ulti, and that's gonna be doing a bunch of damage per second to him. Especially in addition to my Edict. And, uh, he's gonna go down. Oh, Dennis! We're going to ulti down the Skywrath, and that is the end of the game. So hopefully that guy, that gave you a little bit of an idea of how Leshrac is played. Um, generally speaking, I went for a Bloodstone because I had a really good early game, but generally speaking, you might not want to go for a Bloodstone, and of course it's more important to get like a mechanism for your team if uh, so nobody else is building that. I had a Keeper of the Light on my team, so a lot of the support duties fell on him instead of me. He built the mech, and uh, he also bought a lot of wards in the Courier and stuff like that. But uh, Let's Strike is a support, you still need to buy things like that, and you, you know, depending on how the game is going, you may give up on the Bloodstone, because it is often not the smartest decision. We're going to go ahead and pause this, because I think the, um, the recording is going to end soon. But any anyway, thank you guys for watching another episode of uh, Let's Learn Dota 2. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Hopefully you learned a little bit about Leshrac. Uh, if not to play him yourself, how to play against him, what to look out for, the fact that he can turn around on you when you're chasing you and, uh, you know, split earth you and edict you and chase you around can be really surprising. So, uh, you know, he's a more aggressive hero than you might think. So be wary of Leshrax. Watch out for him taking down in your towers. And if you play him, hopefully you have an idea of how that works as well. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. See you guys next time.